Hey guys, welcome back to Ace Recaps. Today I'm going to be explaining a 2023 horror thriller film titled, Cobweb. The film begins one week before Halloween, introducing us to Peter, a solitary young man with no friends or social life. He lives in an old house in town with his parents, Mark and Carol, and he is their only child. A disturbance startles the eight-year-old youngster as he sleeps comfortably in his room one night. He looks around but sees no one and tries to dismiss it. He attempts to sleep again, but the noise returns, this time considerably louder. Peter, terrified, flicks on the lights. The noise appears to be coming from behind the wall, so the eight-year-old gets up, walks over to the wall, and bangs on it, but nothing happens. He is horrified when he receives a response to his knocks. When Peter goes to tell his mother about the noise, they head to his room to investigate, but his mother doesn't hear anything unusual. She explains that old houses often create strange noises and reminds Peter that his imagination might make things appear scarier than they are. The next day, we learn that Peter, who is introverted, is always the subject of bullying from his classmates at school, and the principal presents the students to their substitute teacher, Miss Devine. Later, Peter decides to stay in his classroom during playtime to avoid being bullied outside of the classroom. Miss Devine, his substitute teacher, is friendly and allows him to help decorate the classroom. A spider appears out of nowhere, startling Peter. Miss Devine notices this and catches the spider in a glass before assisting the small boy in releasing it outside. This small act of compassion lifts Peter's spirits. Later that day, Peter asks his parents, Mark and Carol, whether he can go trick or treating for Halloween, but Mark deviates from the topic. He informs Peter that when he was born, a young girl who resided there vanished. She went trick or treating on Halloween night but never returned. Carol adds that it shook the entire neighborhood, and she doesn't want to think about it because his parents won't let him go. Peter had no choice but to spend the evening in his room. Something even stranger happens later, as Peter is sleeping. We see a hump on the wall. Suddenly, a voice from behind the wall in his room calls out his name. Don't tell him, the voice says, but Peter becomes afraid and hastily calls for his father. When Peter tells Mark what he heard, the father checks, but he hears nothing, so he suspects rodents are causing the noise. Mark and Peter walk outdoors the next day and collect some rat poison to deal with it. Peter mentions that it smells like cinnamon, but Mark warns him not to eat it. Mark explains that the rats would die if they consume the poison and appears to believe that Peter is merely afraid of rodents and is unaware that something more terrifying is going on at school. The substitute teacher Divine notices Peter's drawing the next day. It depicts a child seeking for help in a dark place. Divine notices this and becomes concerned, so she decides to make a visit to Peter's house to check on him. She introduces herself to Carol and tells her that, while other kids painted monsters and witches for Halloween, Peter created this, claiming that Peter has a vivid imagination. Carol thinks this is embarrassing. After Divine leaves, she inquires about the picture, but Peter only says that it is merely a terrifying image from his mind, despite the fact that the voice from behind the wall instructed him to draw it. Later that night, Peter is awakened by a knock on the wall and a voice shouting his name from behind it. The voice proposes they become friends, but if he refuses, she will depart. When Peter, who has no friends, hears this, he decides he wants to discuss and invites her to stay. The following school day, we observe Peter making a jack-o'-lantern, which he proudly named Hector. His teacher, Divine praises his masterpiece and declares that his skill is her favorite. Brian, a bully who has been listening, becomes resentful during playtime. He shoves Peter, causing him to fall, and then viciously crushes Peter's pumpkin. While he sleeps, the voice beyond the wall inquires as to why Peter is crying. Peter admits that a kid named Brian is bullying him. In response, the voice tells him that he needs to learn to stand up for himself. The following day, Brian enters the classroom holding a pumpkin and apologizes to Peter for his behavior. Peter, on the other hand, keeps hearing the whispers tell him that he should make Brian afraid of him, which is fueled by the voice behind the wall. Peter follows Brian and pushes him down a flight of stairs, but the aftermath shocks him. Brian's leg has been broken. As he faces expulsion from school, Mark, his father, demands an explanation, so Peter confesses that he did not intend for Brian to tumble down the stairs. 
Carol then reveals Peter's painting of a child pleading for help, and Mark asks Peter why he would draw something like that, but Peter swears it's because he genuinely heard a girl's voice from behind the wall. Mark, frustrated, tells Peter that he is grounded and then pushes the refrigerator behind the cellar door. As punishment, the father orders him to sit, and Carol informs him that they are doing so because they love him before locking him in the basement alone. He tries to communicate with the mystery presence in the basement, but is met with silence, which brings him to tears. Later, something strange happens in the basement. Peter discovers an odd object, a pit covered by a canopy, and inside is a bizarre doll. In the next scene, Divine decides to give Peter another visit. She writes her phone number on his math quiz after he is expelled from school and goes to his house with it. Mark meets her and invites her inside, but Divine is skeptical. When she discovers Mark wielding a hammer, he even offers her a cup of coffee, but as they converse, Divine notices Mark is bleeding, which Mark explains is only from performing some home repairs. When Divine brings up Peter's education during their conversation, Mark informs her that Peter would be homeschooled because Carol is a great instructor. Divine gently recommends that due to Peter's recent behavior, he would benefit from a different learning setting, but Peter's parents are certain that they will not send him away and believe he needs his family. When Divine asks if she may visit Peter and make sure he's okay, they get into a fight. Peter hears the quarrel in the basement and comes upstairs to knock on the door. The kid cries for help repeatedly, but the noise of the washing machine drowns him out. Mark advises Divine she should leave at that point, but just as she's about to leave, Divine turns around. She inquires about the hammering sounds, to which Mark responds that it is caused by the washing machine. Carol offers Peter some pumpkin pies as twilight sets and tells him he can finally leave the cellar. She gives him a bath to refresh him before asking Peter if he's had time to think about things. Peter nods, indicating that he has, and Mark suggests that he stops telling made-up stories. His parents are proud of him and have informed the school that he will not be returning. Later that night, Peter walks to the wall and knocks, hoping to communicate with the voice. The voice, unexpectedly, responds. He tells her about his parents locking him in the basement, and the voice urges him to be cautious around them since they may not be what they appear to be. Peter then expresses his want to see her, but she declines, explaining that she has been locked there for a long time and that he would not like her appearance. A secret is also revealed by the voice. Behind the wallpaper, there is a hole. He pulls off the paper and discovers the concealed hole. He throws his ball into it. To his surprise, he asks the voice about her identity, and she drops a shocking bombshell. Sarah is his sister. Sarah explains that she had to wait until Peter was big enough to move the clock that hides the door so he could assist her in escaping the darkness within the wall. She goes on to say that Mark and Carol are bad, and that Peter's time will come later as the night draws in. When Peter knocks on his door, he is startled to see that there is no one there. Just then, he notices his mother exiting the bathroom, and all of the lights in the house go out. The kid summons his father only to see his parents take on a horrific demonic face. The next morning, Peter awakens to find his mother beside him. She consoles him by telling him it was all a horrible dream. As darkness comes once more, Sarah convinces Peter that his parents are planning to kill her once they've finished with her and then lock him behind the walls. Sarah tells Peter that they've already done so and encourages him to investigate what's concealed in the garden. Curiosity drives Peter to start digging in the garden the next day. As he uncovers a human skull, his heart races. Carol on the other hand, is looking for him in his bedroom and peeping through his bedroom window, but Peter buries the skull before she can intervene. When she wonders what he's up to, he turns back with a pumpkin in his hand and says he's thinking of carving it. Later, Sarah explains to Peter that the fateful day before they imprisoned her inside the wall was Halloween. Peter says that he'll get her out, believing that he knows someone who can assist in taking action. Peter enters his parents' room with the intention of using the phone. He contacts Miss Divine for help. A noise startles him, and he notices his mother standing immediately behind him. Carol quickly says that Peter was only expressing how much he misses his teacher before hanging up and confronting Peter about his effort to contact a stranger. She walks him back to his room and conveys her disappointment with his activities. It is at this point that she notices the ripped wallpaper and investigates the hole behind it only to flee in terror. 
She abruptly cautions Peter that whatever happens from here on is all his fault. Sarah gives Peter some advice later that night. He must act on his parents' behalf or risk sharing her fate, summoning his courage. Peter walks down the stairs, calmly observing his parents. Mark expresses his worries about the temporary solutions in a serious conversation. Carol catches Peter eavesdropping in the act. Peter rushes back to his room, but Mark sees through the charade and assures Peter that he'll be there to assist Peter out in the garden after he returns from work. The next day, we see them in the garden. Peter realizes that Mark has already dug up the garden and may be disposed of the skeleton. Mark explains that black rot is fast spreading throughout the garden, killing everything it comes into contact with. They'll bury the pumpkins in the hopes that the following crop will be better. Meanwhile, a new threat looms as Brian and his relatives arrive at the residence to exact revenge on Peter. Later that evening, during supper, the doorbell rings, which is inconvenient. Carol, who goes to respond, finds trick or treaters gather outside, but she shoos them away and returns to her table. Mark then mentions the soup, and Carol sees that it has a peculiar smell, similar to cinnamon. At this point, Mark realizes that something is wrong and notices that the shed door is open. While Peter hasn't touched his food, the father asks if he has done anything, but Peter remains silent, which frustrates Mark. Furthermore, Peter informs his father that he harmed his sister. The parents are astonished, and Mark suspects Peter smuggled rat poison into their dinner soup. Mark begins to groan and asks Carol to dial 911, but Carol discovers the phone cord has been severed amidst the chaos, and Mark succumbs to the poison and dies. Carol discovers what Peter has done by grasping a knife at this point. Carol follows Peter upstairs, but the mother feels ill and begins to vomit blood. Peter flees her by kicking his mother down the stairs, and he discovers that Carol has accidentally stabbed herself with the knife. Peter takes the keys from his mother. As he turns to leave for his room, she awakens, clutches his leg, and warns him to not let her out, but he ignores her. In the room, he approaches the clock, as commanded by Sarah. He lets her that he has arrived with the keys, and she directs him to move the clock. As he tries, the clock falls and shatters, revealing a concealed door, which Sarah instructs Peter to unlock. However, just as he is ready to unlock it, Sarah pounds on the door, startling him. Sarah climbs out into the dim area as the hatch door slowly creaks open. While Peter goes into another room, something strange happens, she does not appear to be human. She enters Peter's room, tries to unlock the door, and asks him how it felt to see his parents die. The doorbell suddenly rings, and the creature departs. Brian and his cousin stand outside the house to teach Peter a lesson. The door automatically opens, and the four of them enter the house and begin searching for Peter, who hides beneath his bed in terror. One of them enters Peter's room, while the others cause mayhem around the house. Brian slips and falls in the midst of the chaos. When the guy who was smashing the piano is about to leave, he hears a noise and notices hair sliding down from the piano, just as the creature tosses him down and kills him. The other boy spots Peter hiding under the bed in his room, but before he can grab him, he hears his brother's voice and flees. Meanwhile, Brian is paralyzed by panic as he discovers Carol's lifeless body, adding to his terror. Sarah pursues another relative as the door abruptly closes on its own. She drags him away while he begs. In exchange for assistance, the creature murders each of the lads one by one until it is Brian's turn. Suddenly, spiders descend on Brian, and he finds himself face to face with Sarah, who proceeds to murder him. Meanwhile, Miss Divine is heading to Peter's home. Peter, on the other hand, is shocked to see Sarah beheading one of the guys. She then walks out of the room and begins crawling towards him, telling him that they were so delighted when he was born, but they screamed when she was born. As a result, her father dug a pit for her and locked her up. She was suffering among cobwebs and mice while he was crying in this nice bed. It took her many years to learn how to climb, bite, and make him do what she wanted. She then drags him away and locks him in the chamber from where she emerged. Divine arrives at Peter's house, finds the door open and when she enters, hears echoes, and notices a shadow in the kitchen. Seeing the chaos, she attempts to dial 911. She hears a commotion and sees Sarah's hair but before she can respond, Sarah scratches her leg and she comes face to face with Brian's cousin's body. 
Sarah crawls up to her, causing Divine to scramble and flee, only to discover that the door is locked. Just then Peter's voice breaks through, pleading with Divine to hurry up and save him. She rushes inside Peter's room and attempts to smash down the door. She manages to burst through the wall and flees the house with Peter. Unfortunately, when Divine gets outside, Peter is snatched away. After a while, Peter awakens to find himself trapped in an underground chamber. He discovers a soft toy there. Peter asks Sarah why she is acting this way. As she crawls towards him, curiosity overpowers his terror. According to Sarah, not every child can be as perfect as him. She was born as a monster, and no one likes a monster. Miss Divine then appears, looking for Peter. Sarah comes from the chamber and is attacked by Divine. In a brave maneuver, Peter grabs Sarah's long hair and pulls himself out of the cellar hole. Divine seizes the opportunity and attacks Sarah with a rod. As a result, Sarah falls back into the chamber, and Peter closes the lid before she can climb out. Sarah then begs for her freedom in a childlike way and asks him if he truly believes this will keep her down here. Every creak, moan, and tap on the wall will remind him of her. And she promises that they will be together forever. That's all folks. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a great day.